Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits, and GED match results of a Takarian individual. This is part, uh, I think this is part 5 actually, I've done a lot of samples. And I, will, I want to say that I think I will be stopping here. Uh, I will be stopping because people don't generally watch these videos. I am spending effort on making a video and nobody watches it. You guys enjoy my videos on hunter-gatherers, various European groups, um, Africans as well. Those videos do well. But Takarians, these kinds of videos I notice are not doing really good. So, um, nonetheless, this is going to be the last video for a while. Maybe sometime in the very far future I will return to this topic. But this individual's Y-DNA is R1B. It's a male. His uh, lineage is R1B. His mitochondrial lineage is H2A1. Uh, in terms of the ethnicity, with my ethnic calculator, he is closest to Yamlans from Kalmykia, uh, followed by Hispanics, followed by Sarmatians from the Urals. So, uh, quite step, quite step result. Hispanics are a little outlier result here, uh, but it's quite a step looking result. What about GED match? Let me show you what he scores with um, Admixture Studio because I am gone from GED match. And with Admixture Studio, I'm going to show you MDLP World K11E. As you can see, he is scoring mostly Cocosus related admixture. 36% EHG, which is really a Cocosus component. 32% European Hunter Gatherer admixture, which is mislabeled as WHG, really, it is all European Hunter Gatherers. Uh, so this looks like a typical score for somebody from Yamne culture. However, what is the difference here? What separates this result? From a Yamne result is something else. It is the Siberian, the Amerindian, uh, and the Oceanic that this individual scores. Yamnans typically don't score those components. And 9% Siberian and 8% Amerindian is a lot. So this individual is like a mixture of Yamne plus a little bit something else from uh, Siberia, Western Siberia, or uh, whoever lived in this region in Xinjiang before the Afanasyevo culture came there. Because the Afanasyevo... Uh, which was the Indo-European culture that sort of sired these Takarians. And Takarians are a Iron Age group. Afanasio is a Bronze Age group. So Afanasio came before the Takarians. They sired, they created sort of the Takarians. Uh, Afanasio were, were an Eastern offshoot of Yamne, and they were pretty much identical to Yamnans in terms of the uh, autosomal DNA. So the reason this individual is scoring closest to Yamne from Kalmykia is because Yamne from Kalmykia is... Uh, almost identical to what Afanasivo is in terms of this calculator, in terms of what their ethnicity in general resembles. One people, you could say. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and look at his uh, national quota results and his trait predictor results, what kind of traits he has, what kind of uh, illnesses he has. By the way, I did update trait predictor. Uh, you will see something really nice at the bottom of the page, um, which, you know, you probably will enjoy that. So for Nashakot, it looks like this individual has got this kind of a phenotype. This looks like a very Mid Middle Eastern, Mediterranean-ish kind of a look. Followed by this, which is definitely more of an Arab look. Followed by this, which is more of a South Asian look. So this guy is not Nordic. This guy is not a blonde, blue-eyed uh, Englishman, as some people would probably think the Karians look like. Uh, and with the... Oracle for phenotype, the phenotype oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of this, which is Pamirid plus this, which is, I think, Berberid, I don't remember. Uh, but it doesn't matter what it's called. It could be, I mean, looking at this person, I could definitely uh, see him being from Pakistan or something like that. It doesn't have to be Berberid or whatever. They just, it's called that, but it doesn't mean that only Berbers can have this look. That's ridiculous. So it looks like he's getting modeled as a mixture of Pamirid plus this, or this plus this, or even this plus this. So this individual probably has some Middle Eastern facial traits, or mostly Middle Eastern facial traits, based on this result. Um, okay, what about the coloring? We're going to go into the eye color. It looks like for the eye color, he's got darkest brown eyes, definitely very dark brown eye color. Although there is also a 31% likelihood of brown eyes for him, and everything else is pretty much out of the picture. Uh, for hair color, it looks like he's got black hair, and everything else is pretty much out of the picture. For skin color, it looks like he's got light brown skin, and everything else is pretty much out of the picture. All right, so he's quite dark. Quite dark for hair texture. It looks like he's got curly hair. Actually, curly or wavy hair. All right, or straight. Could be straight. I, I, could be even straight. 
uh, but it is probably not kinky. So it's probably curly to straight and not kinky. And kinky, in case you don't know, it's it's. I have a picture right here on the screen showing what that might look like. Because uh, not everybody English is the first language, uh, and not everybody knows these obscure words to describe hair texture. Coloring rela related variants looks like no blue haplotype three, no BEH two, uh, no BEH one. Actually, no, never mind. Not no BEH one. He's got heterozygous genotype for BEH one. Okay, and heterozygous genotype for BEH four. Uh, keep in mind that these two variations are also very good proxies for blue haplotype one. So, uh, if we if we go by this genotype, then yeah, he doesn't have BH1. But if we go by this genotype, then he most likely does indeed have BH1. In fact, I noticed that these two variations are even better as proxies for this haplotype. Um, be better markers to define the haplotype, I should suggest. And for blue haplotype 4, he's got heterozygous genotype for this one. So it looks like he's got uh, some light color variants in BH4, which is very surprising because um, the light color variants here are a very Mediterranean thing. Uh, they are something you will find in specifically in the Basque people in Europe. But what is interesting about this specific mutation, the light color variant here, is that I haven't seen any European farmers with BH4. However, I have seen Yamnians with BH4. I've seen like, I don't know, like five Yamnians with blue eye haplotype 4, which is really surprising because nowadays uh, it's mostly found in southwest of Europe where there isn't much Yamnia ancestry. So in, in, in his case, his um, derived variant here probably is something he's got from the Yamnians or the Afanasiva, whatever. I use them interchangeably. Uh, no light color variants in associate 45A2, so definitely quite dark in terms of the color of uh, hair, eyes, and skin. Uh, two light color variants in this variation of SLC 24A5, so definitely has Eurasian light skin variants here. Really good to see. Um... There's nothing much interesting here, and he does not have any light color variants in MC1R, so it looks like he does not, uh, excuse me, does not have a predisposition to being ginger. All right. Now let's go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores and what kind of illnesses he has. So for polygenic risk scores, it looks like he's got a spot-on average odds for schizophrenia for Northern Europeans. And let's use Northern Europeans as a reference group for him rather than Sub-Saharan Africans, because he's obviously much closer to Northern Europeans than to Sub-Saharan Africans in terms of admixture. Uh, he's got below average odds of diabetes, type 2 diabetes, definitely doesn't have to type 2 diabetes, really good to see. Although you can't say definitely, it's a very common disease. It's actually pretty common. So having a below average score for diabetes doesn't mean you definitely don't have it. It just means you have a below average chance of getting it. Uh, below average chance of uh, getting Alzheimer's, once again, really good to see. Uh, below average chance of getting multiple sclerosis, really good to see, it looks quite healthy. Two risk variants for breast cancer out of 10, which is pretty good. Seven risk variants for testicular cancer out of, out of 12, which is kind of not so good. So we're going to have to explore that a little bit. One risk variant for celiac disease out of 8, which is pretty good. Zero for GSS out of 14, which is pretty good. Six for Crohn's out of 22, which is kind of edging on uh, dangerous territory. So we're going to have to explore the Crohn's section a little bit more in depth. Um, Reifenstein's nothing relevant was found. Very unfortunate. Two risk variants for Parkinson's out of 12. Pretty good. All right, so there is not much to be concerned about here. There's actually nothing about this result that is even the slightest bit alarming. So I guess we're just gonna have to walk, walk through the uh, we're gonna have to walk through the monogenic traits and find out if there's anything else there. For the Combs of Ahmed variation, he's got met met genotype or what a year genotype, definitely lower activity of the Combs enzyme or what a year uh, in phenotype, but he's got what a year genotype in the MAOA. So so overall, probably a little bit intermediate between. Warrior and Warrior. Uh, he's Warrior in MAOA, Warrior and Comt. Both of these enzymes are enzymes that break down dopamine. So he's got less of the MAO, um, less of the Comt enzyme, but more of the MAOA enzyme. Overall, it kind of cancels out to intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake, intermediate dopamine levels in the brain. It looks like he does not have no golden variance due to sporophenetin pro variation, which means higher number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain and higher odds of schizophrenia. Very, very interesting. However, this is sort of uh, this genotype is sort of mitigated by this genotype in TAC1, where he's got AG, he's got one A allele here, uh, and this one A allele is a big deal because it greatly reduces the number of dopamine to receptor sites in the brain and increases the likelihood of stuff like alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, decreases the odds of schizophrenia. So having the A allele here is a big deal. Uh, he does not have two A alleles, but one A allele is already uh, like a 20% decrease in the availability of dopamine to receptor sites in the brain. So that's a big deal.
Um, it looks like he's not genie type for the 5 HTC LPR thing, so I can't really talk about that. Uh, but he's got Heterozygous genie type in both of the variations in HTR2A, which lead to uh, intermediate odds of depression and normal risk of social sexual dysfunction with taking SSRI antidepressants. Uh, this variation right here in HT in HTR2A actually is implicated in um, how you respond to SSRIs, which is pretty interesting. Okay, and we're going to skip autism, we're going to skip DDC. For lactose persistence, looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Nothing surprising here. Uh, I don't think this. I don't think I've seen a Yamnaya or a Fanasiwa genome with the European lactose persistence mutation so far. For OXTR and empathy gene, it looks like he's got increased OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy. Re really, really good to see. Um, for diabetes, um, the main and the most important variation for type one diabetes is unfortunately not here, so I can't really talk about that one. All right. For hemochromatosis, it looks like he is not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation. Really good to see. For Alzheimer's, it looks like no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE. Really good to see. For multiple sclerosis, no risk variance in HLA, which is really important. This is by far the most important gene when it comes to multiple sclerosis risk. So uh, like this, for example, this common risk variant, it doesn't matter all that much, to be honest. For cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like um, he's got this gene, which leads to a significant increase in the risk of heart attack, which is pretty interesting. And this gene type leads to increase the risk of coronary artery disease, and this gene type leads to increase risk of heart disease. Okay, actually, I'm I'm seeing that uh, I'm seeing that he's got a lot of genotypes. He's got a lot of genotypes that uh, contribute to higher risk of heart disease, and pretty much no genotypes that would protect from it. So that actually looks a little bit concerning. Okay, interesting. Uh, for myopia, it looks like he does not have the G allele here, which would be protective from myopia, but he doesn't have it. However, he's got some genotypes that protect from myopia, so I guess he's just kind of intermediate risk of myopia. For miscellaneous section, it looks like he's got mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter than an endurance athlete. All right. No fat gene variants in FTOs, RS99, not predisposed to obesity. One variant for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A, which is very interesting. And no East Asian genotype in EDAR, so European genotype in EDAR, and also not an Asian flusher. Uh, lower odds of alcoholism, normal risk of esophageal cancer. Uh, doesn't really have any East Asian genetic traits, it looks like. For drug response, I just added this, which is kind of like super interesting. Um, so let's talk about it. So he's got CC here, which leads to 200 to 500 times percent, not times, <laughs> excuse me, uh, two to five times increased odds of Parkinson's symptoms when treated with antipsychotics. Um, He's got greater odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, according to his genotype here in Act 1, which is very interesting once again. Looks like he would not be able to smoke weed without getting negative con negative um, consequences. For albinism in the typical traits panel, it looks like he he's not a carrier for occutaneous albinism type 1b. For familiar Mediterranean fever, he is actually a carrier for one risk variant for that. He has one risk variant for familiar Medi Mediterranean fever at the very bottom here. Kind of interesting. All right. Uh, he's obviously not a Mediterranean, but uh, somehow he has a risk variant there. But I guess it's not so uncommon because I've seen uh, Europeans with risk variants for familiar med Mediterranean fever. Uh, I guess you just need to have more than one to um, have the risk of developing the, the disease. For MTHFR panel, it looks like he's got this genotype, which leads to normal hamo, hamo, I can't pronounce that, good genotype basically, slightly lower than average odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. Um, However, he's got this genotype, which leads to a number of risks associated with impaired folate metabolism, such as cancer, cleft lip, dementia, arthritis, heart disease. And he's got this uncommon genotype, which actually lowers blood pressure, which is very, uh, very interesting. The G allele here is the uncommon allele that slightly lowers blood pressure. For cancer spinal, um, it looks like for testicular cancer, he's got some genotypes that increase the, the risk of that, but that's not particularly surprising because Europeans and West Eurasians in general tend to have these uh, risk variants for testicular cancer. And for breast cancer, um, nothing too interesting here because I've, I'm pretty sure all of these, um, the variants here, the risk variants here are pretty common. For leukemia panel, it looks like he's got this gene type which leads to increased risk of leukemia. For rare diseases panel, no von Gerg's disease and zero risk variants here, good to see. For celiac disease, looks like no HLA, no risk variance in HLA once again. Really good to see. 
for allergies panel, we're going to skip. For androgen receptor gene panel, it looks like he's got typical or higher odds of boldness. Uh, once again, he does not have the A allele here, which would sort of protect from going bold, but that's not surprising because he's a West Eurasian, and West Eurasians tend to have GG in this variation. Uh, he's got CC here, which is the typical or lower odds of Crohn's disease. So it looks like we remember he was scoring six risk, risk variants for Crohn's. Uh, he's all good. That doesn't matter. He's um, completely healthy. Canavan syndrome, zero risk variants for that. HIV and AIDS panel looks like he's got one protective variant here, which protects from HIV. 60% uh, reduction in HIV viral load. Really good to see. Uh, for muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like he's got zero risk variants for any of these myopathies. Really good to see. For color blindness panel, as you can see, I centered um, I centered the uh, images for this portion of the for this portion of the result. I don't know. I think it looks better and it looks more professional or something. For the color blindness panel, it looks like he's got zero risk variants for Color blindness in OPN1 MW, but one risk gradient in OPN1 SW, which is really interesting. For FTO fat gene panel, it looks like he's got no fat gene variants, which is really good to see. Uh, no predisposition to being obese or overweight. Let me zoom in, actually. Okay, for the syncope, uh, in case you don't know what a syncope is, a syncope is when you lose blood flow to your brain and you faint. Uh, I've had it quite, quite often recently um that's why i decided to add it but my risk score for syncope is actually super low which is very interesting but in his case his risk for syncope is basically average and for bio trades panel it looks like he's got high risk of male pattern boldness lower risk of male pattern boldness i guess those cancel out lower predisposition to anger and i can't see because of the clip champ thingy yeah shorter telomere length let me zoom in hold on i can't see anything yeah, shorter telomere length and lifespan. All right, so he's a little bit shorter in terms of the lifespan. Well, thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And also, I want to remind you that you can download the raw data file in 23andMe format for this sample in um, the link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.